Honey, can you get that? Yeah. Someone's oh, here. Oh, okay. Sure. Thanks, kids. Bye. Kids? Who was that? It was a bunch of students from Powell Valley Elementary in Oregon. Powell Valley Elementary in Oregon? Yeah, they uh, had a list of questions that they wondered if I would ask you about writing. Really? Yeah. Well, that was so nice of them to come by. I've actually been to that school. Oh, that's cool. And I know one of the teachers, Mr. Robertson. Oh. He's kind of weird. Oh, well. He's the weird teacher. You know, he teaches fourth grade, so. That's awesome. So what kind of questions do we have here? Okay, Spencer asks, why do you write fiction? Why do I write fiction? I think fiction is way more fun than real life. And it ha I can include anything I want, like magic and stuff like that. And so that's why I love to write, write fiction. Great. Spencer also asks, is there a specific book that inspired you to be a writer? Probably not one specific book, uh, but I read a lot when I was a kid. And I loved books like Charlotte's Web and the Narnia series. And so books like that were very um, important to me in my childhood. Great. Um, Jesse, Aaliyah, Hector, and some others asked, where do you get the ideas for your book? Mm, the ideas. That's always a question I get. And a lot of times uh, I'll get ideas from dreams. And But the thing about that is you have to write them down in the middle of the night. And that can be hard to do because you don't feel like it but um, sometimes you forget your dreams, so that's important to do. But one way that I get a lot of ideas is by asking what if. And it happens all the time. Like I'll be walking down the sidewalk and I'll think, what if this sidewalk opened up and I fell inside and there was a different world down there? What would happen? Or like one time I saw uh, on the side of the highway when I was driving, I saw a stroller a baby stroller sitting on the, on the side and it was faced away. And I think most people would say, oh, that stroller probably fell off of a truck or something. And, but I thought, what if there's a baby in there and somebody left it there and who would do that? What kind of evil person would do such a thing? And who's going to stop and check to see if there's a baby in there and what will happen? So things like that really give me ideas. Okay, a few students asked very similar questions, so I'll, I'll read them all and you can kind of answer them together. Lily asked, what made you want to be an author? Josh asked, why do you like writing books? And Gracie and Charlotte asked, why did you become an author? So what made you want to be an author? Why do you like writing books? Why did you become an author? So I think the inspiration for me to become an author came in the fourth grade, which honestly, it happens to a lot of authors. We all have this thing in common, like Margaret Peterson Haddix, also fourth grade. She decided she wanted to be a writer or an author, and um, she's written a lot of books that some of you may have read. Um, but one day my teacher, Mr. Avink, in fourth grade, made us all write a, a story, and he picked the best story, and the person who wrote the best story, got to go to this thing called the Young Authors Conference. And he picked me and I was so shocked because I wasn't the best at anything. But he told me that I was the best uh, with this story assignment. And it made me feel amazing. And I realized how much I loved writing. And so I kept going and it, it was so enjoyable to me. Okay, Nathaniel and Lauren asked, if you could write a letter to your 12 year old self, what would you write? Hmm. I would write, Dear Lisa, don't give up. From Lisa. There you go. Lauren asked, do you try to be more original with each book or do you try to deliver what your readers want? Hmm. That's a really good question. It is. Um, and it's hard to deliver what my readers want for this particular reason. And that is when one of my books comes out, uh, 
I'll get a lot of readers who say, oh, this is what should come next. But the problem is, uh, then usually their ideas are great, but the problem is I've already written the next book and probably started on the book following that. So that's how long it takes in publishing to um, get the books to actually come into the hands of the readers. So a lot of times it's too late for their ideas to work in the book. Jocelyn asked, how long does it take to write a book? It takes uh, about six months for me to write an unwanted sized book. And that's with me writing the rough draft and then sending it to my editor and doing some revisions and going back and forth a few times. So that whole process is about six months. Lauren asks, does writing energize or exhaust you? Hmm, both. I get really excited about a new idea and I love writing action scenes, but by the time I'm done with those, I'm exhausted. So it does both. Yeah. Lily and Lauren have two questions that are similar. Lily asks, how long ago did you write your first book and Lauren asked, how long have you been a professional author? Oh, great. So my first book never got published. That was in 2006. Um, so it's been since then, 14 years since I wrote my first book. And, and then I wrote a second one that didn't also didn't get published. And that happens with writers. Uh, we have to have some practice novels sometimes. Uh, but then my first book that actually came out into the world was in 2008. So that was 12 years ago, and I've been a professional author since then. Great. Catherine would like to know, how many books have you written? I have 25 published books. Um, book number 26 comes out this fall in September, September 8. And that is the sixth book in the Unwanted's Quest series. Great, Evan's got kind of a big question. How do you publish a book? Mm. Okay, so Evan, usually the only people who ask me that question are people who also want to be published. And so you must be a writer, which is awesome. Um, it's a really tough question to answer in a short amount of time. Um, but basically you have to write the whole book first then you want to get it in the best possible shape you can do. So you want to have some friends read it and give you feedback and maybe an adult that's close to you who can tell you what the story needs so that you can make it better and better and better. And when it's the best you can make it, then you start to look for an agent. And an agent is someone who uh, knows all of the editors in New York, uh, which is where a lot of the publishing houses are. And so when an agent decides to take you on and wants to sell your book, they go to all those editors that they know and they say, I've got this awesome book um, about monsters and I think you're going to love it. And do you want to buy it? And do you want to print it and have it available in bookstores? And so that's what the agent does. And then the editors at the books, at the publishing houses, are the ones who actually help get it even better than the, the book that you originally wrote. Yep. There's another book out there that I want you to read. Um, and it's called, I think it's called Dear Allie by Allie Carter. Allie Carter is a writer for children and she wrote this book about how to get published based on all the questions she gets about how to get published. So it's a really great book and I hope you check it out. Uh, I think it's called Dear Allie or it might be called Dear Author. I can't remember now, but it's by Allie Carter, A-L-L-Y Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R. -E great. Reese asked, who is your favorite author? Me? Just kidding, Reese. Um, I love books from my childhood. I love the Narnia series. I love Charlotte's Web. I love Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, so those are all different authors, but I also love current books, like um, a book that came out a year or two ago called Front Desk by Kelly Yang. That's one of my new favorite books, so I hope you'll check it out. Presley asks, what is your favorite book that you've written? Mm, I 
would say it's the one I'm currently writing right now. And that is the seventh book in the Unwanted's Quest series. I'm working on it. I wrote the rough draft. It's gonna be out next February. So we've got book six coming out this fall in September. Book seven will be out in February. And that's the very last book in the whole Unwanted's world forever. So right now, that's the book that's my favorite because it's very exciting. Presley also asks, have you written any nonfiction? And if not, do you want to? I have not written any nonfiction, but I came close once with a book in the Infinity Ring series. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that yep. series? The Infinity Ring series is a time travel series written by all different authors. And so I wrote book three in the series and it's called The Trap Door. And it is about time travel. And it's three kids who go back in time mm -hmm. and they have to fix the broken parts of history. And so my topic was the Civil War and Harriet Tubman. So I did write about Harriet Tubman and some of the things in the story are true, sure. but it's also fiction. So there's some made up stuff too. Charlie asks, um, how in the world did you come up with the adventure story, The Unwanted? Did you see a creature somewhere that inspired you so much you had to write about it? Or did you look at the horizon and say, that's majestic and so beautiful, I have to write about it? What inspired The Unwanted? So The Unwanted was inspired by my own kids when they were 12 and nine. And they came home from school one day and they had a letter in their backpacks. And it said, dear parents, we are very sorry to tell you that we have to eliminate the arts classes at school because of budget cuts. So no more art, no more music, no more theater. And I felt terrible because my kids love those classes. My son loves to draw, my daughter loves to act and sing. And I remember saying, you know, kids, I'm so sorry. This kind of feels like you're being punished for being creative. And then, as it happens with writers, we ask, what if, all the time? And I asked that question. I said, what if there really was a world where children were punished for being creative? And I said the idea out loud, and my 12-year-old son said, not just punished, sent to their deaths. And I said, yeah, ha, 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 ha. But, you know, it's not like I want that to happen in real life. Don't get me wrong. But in a book, I would love to know what's going to happen with those children who are considered unwanted in their society and who get sent to their deaths. They're so creative. They've got to figure out something. So I began to write that first chapter of the original Unwanted series, this book right here. And I wrote about Alex and Aaron Stowe and their identical twin brothers. And they're standing in the commons of Quill, this dystopian world where it's against the law to be creative. And they're waiting to find out what's going to happen to them. And we discover that Alex and his friends, uh, Lonnie and Samhead and Megan are all unwanted and they're heading to their deaths. And then something else happens. Which it has to, right? Because if they're all gonna die, then it's gonna be a really short book. And luckily, that doesn't happen. They find themselves in a magical world where they can use their creativity to do magic for fun, but also to protect themselves in case they ever have to fight. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about how that came to be, and that was a great question. Charlie has another question. Do you like monsters? Because if you do, that would make a monster puppet friend very happy. A monster puppet friend. I think I know who we're talking about here. And I just have to say, I like monsters. I think they're great. But you know who likes monsters even more than me? My husband, Matt. In fact, True. I didn't mention this, but Matt's a writer too. He's writing some books for middle grade students. And he's not published yet, but he's got monsters in his books. Do you want to hear about it? 
Tell them. I've written three books so far. My first book had some monsters in it, but that wasn't the focus. My second book um, is about two 12-year-old best friends who are camping in a remote area and they find this giant fence and they sneak inside and discover that it's a pen for giant monsters and they have to fight their way out. And then my sec uh, third book that I'm working on right now is about a game, a uh, dangerous sport that takes place on top of a mountain where the players have to fight monsters and stuff. So hopefully you'll be able to read those books sometime in the future. Yeah, I hope so too, because I have read them and they're amazing. And if you like monsters, you're gonna like these books. So cross your fingers for Matt McMahon to get those books published. We're hoping for it. Oh, and speaking of monsters, I have a feeling your puppet friend monster thinks he ought to be in my books. That's what I heard. It was a rumor. And I just want you to tell your monster friend that if he wants to be in the Unwanted's books, he has to come to Artemis first. So I can't write about him if he's not there. Unfortunately though, I've already written the final book so it may be too late. So don't count on it, but maybe in my next book. All right, last question, also from Charlie. Are you struggling to work during this time of quarantine? Oh, what a great question. You know, I struggled a little bit at first, and I think we all have been struggling a little bit sure. because a lot of stuff is on our minds and stuff is being taken away from us. And in fact, it kind of reminds me of when those classes were taken away from my kids, you know. Um, but this is way worse, isn't it? Uh, but the thing that keeps me going and keeps me writing and working is you. It's the fact that you are reading my books. Some of you are just discovering them for the first time. Your, or, and others of you maybe have read all of the whole first series of seven books and you're caught up all the way through book five on the Unwanted's Quest series, which is a sequel series, and you're waiting for book six to come out this fall. But just me knowing that you're there reading and first discovering these characters and these stories makes me wanna keep going. So that's what gives me inspiration, it's you. So I wanna say thank you for that. And thank you for inviting me into your homes today. I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. My name is Lisa McMahon, and I am the author of The Unwanteds and The Unwanted's Quest series, and The Going Wild series, which is another trilogy that I wrote about a girl who finds a bracelet that gives her animal powers. So, and this is Matt McMahon, my husband. So thanks for inviting us to be with you. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're inspired to read and to write. Bye. Bye.